Uh, this next session is uh, Green Opera Goes Into the Woods and is an interactive musical journey with Green Opera to save the fairy forest. Green Opera are a charity with a vision of making music and drama in a way that is environmentally sustainable. This workshop has been adapted from their recent online production of Gilbert and Sullivan's, Sullivan's Ireland. Ireland. Coordinated by, uh, by Eleanor Burke and Nina Vintha with the help from some of the fairies this session includes a short musical performance and a workshop where we will be taught some of the music from the production and how to make fairy wings from recycled materials. Hello everyone! <laughs> I should be able to see my screen, is that right Nina? You, can you see everything? All good. Perfect. Oh. <clears> hey <throat> then. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Eleanor. And I'm Nina. And we're from Green Opera, a theatre company that makes music and drama in a way that looks after the planet. That means that every part of the opera, from the cast of characters, to the sets, to the costumes, to the story, has to be available. And we're very excited um, today to be sharing a special story with you called Green Opera Goes Into the Woods, about a group of fairies whose forest home has come under threat because all the humans keep dropping their litter there. Now, we can't tell this story without you, so I'm going to need everyone to join in to help us help the fairies convince the humans to stop littering their home. Sounds good. So, let's start imagining. Our story begins in the beautiful Bluebell Forest. It was called the Bluebell Forest because thousand upon thousand of bluebells blossomed there all year round. People used to come from miles to see the bluebells. Many people also believe that the forest was magical. What else could explain the fact that it was always spring in the forest? Although stories of fairy dances have been passed down from generation to generation, it had been years since anyone had actually seen a fairy. But magical creatures do live in the forest. Humans are just too big and clumsy to spot them. If we look very closely, we can see some of their houses. And if you listen very closely, you might be able to hear the fairies singing. Let's meet the fairies, everyone. We are dainty little fairies, ever singing, ever dancing. We
But now the fairies need our help. You see, the humans who live in the nearby town have dropped so much rubbish in the forest that the bluebells have stopped growing. Soon it won't be called the bluebell forest at all. Now, what sorts of rubbish do you think the fairies found in the forest? What can we see? <clears throat> so I went for a walk in the park this morning, Eleanor, and I found a lot of rubbish. I oh, can't no. Things. Oh no, indeed. I carefully picked things up and put them in the bin, but some of the things I brought home and washed <laughs> to make a costume or a set for Green Opera's next performance. I'll show you some of the things I found. A Domino's flyer flying around, a bottle lid, some string, a mask, lots of these lying around a takeaway box, some nectarine covers that must have flown from the market, an empty bottle of wine that someone had left, and some of this bubble wrap. But I thought that they would make a brilliant creative task for me to do later. Now, what kind of rubbish do you think you might find in the forest? We've shown you some of the stuff that we've found. Um, but maybe talk amongst yourselves and have a little think about the sorts of things you might be able to find on your next walk. Mm. And how, how do you think the animals feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because lots of animals live in the forest and all of this rubbish makes it a bit more difficult for them to live there. So have a little talk and a think about how the animals might feel to find their homes full of rubbish. And whilst you do that, we've chosen our top rubbish facts to share with you. Now, did you know that if you lined up all the plastic bottles thrown away each year, you could circle the planet four times? On average, we each use 17 trees worth of wood and paper per year each, which we then throw away. We throw away enough paper and wood every year to heat 50,000 homes for two decades. The RSPCA gets 5,000 calls a year to help come and rescue trapped animals and 2.25 million pieces of litter are dropped on the streets of Britain every day. It's a lot of rubbish. And every year, nine billion tonnes of this rubbish finds its way into the oceans. And there are currently 5.25 trillion bits of plastic in the oceans where they get choked down by fish and birds. Did you know that 75% of our rubbish can be recycled, but we only recycle 30% of it? It's not very good, is it? No, and we must recycle because otherwise things take a very long time to biodegrade. Do you know how long a banana takes to break down? A plastic bag? A tin can? A plastic or a glass bottle? Well, while you think about that, we're going to get back to the story. Now, luckily for the fairies, there was one man who wanted to help. His name was Strephon and his father was a human, but his mother was a fairy named Iolanthe. Now Strephon knew that it could take up to two years for a banana skin to decompose, that plastic bags took 10 to 20 years to decompose, tin cans took 50, and plastic bottles took forever. So a fairy might get trapped inside one of those for eternity, which we wouldn't want. So Strephon promises the fairy queen and his mother that he will try and persuade the people of the town to strop, to strop, to stop dropping <laughs> their rubbish and to start picking it up instead. The fairy queen wishes him good luck and says that he is, if he is ever in danger or peril, then he must call and the fairies will come to his aid. Call us and we'll come to thee. 
thee. I call us and we'll come to thee. Feeling encouraged by the fairies, Strephon arrives in the local town hall to see if he can persuade the evil town mayor, who is called the Lord Chancellor, and his cronies to help. None of them believe in fairies, but we'll see if Strephon can work his magic. Now, sir, what excuse have you to offer for having disobeyed an order of the Court of Chancery? My Lord, I know no courts of Chancery. I go by nature's acts of parliament. The bees, the breeze, the seas, the rooks, the brooks, the gales, the vales, the fountains and the mountains cry, you love this maiden, take her, we command you. When chorus nature bid me take my love, shall I reply, nay, but a certain chancellor forbids it? Sir, you are England's Lord High Chancellor, but are you chancellor of birds and trees, king of the winds and prince of thunderclouds? No, it's a nice point. I don't know that I've ever met it before. But my difficulty is that at present there's no evidence that Chorus Nature has interested herself in the matter. Now, an affidavit from a thunderstorm, or a few words on oath from a heavy shower, would meet with all the attention they deserve. Have you the heart to apply the prosaic rules of evidence to a case which bubbles over with poetical emotion? Distinctly. I've always kept my duty strictly before my eyes, and... It is to that fact that I owe my advancement to my present distinguished position. <gasps> oh dear, Strathon does not seem to be having much luck. And it's hardly surprising because the Lord Chancellor doesn't seem to believe in evidence or poetical emotion or fairies. And we actually caught him singing a song backstage. When I went to the bars, a very young man said I to myself, said I, I'll work on a new and original plan, said I to myself, said I, I'll never assume that a rogue or thief is a gentleman worthy implicit belief, because his attorney has sent me a brief, said I to myself, said I. Go to court, I will read my brief through, said I to myself, said I, and I'll never take work I'm unable to do, said I to myself, said I, my learned profession I'll never disgrace by taking a fee with a grin on my face when I haven't been there to attend to the case, said I to myself, said I. In other professions in which men engage, said I to myself, said I, the army, the navy, the church and the stage, said I to myself, said I. Professional license if carried too far, your chance of promotion will certainly mar, and I fancy the rule might apply to the bar, said I to myself, said I. What a dastardly Lord Chancellor. What corruption. We give him a boo. Thumbs down. Boo. <laughs> now, out of ideas, Strephon did what we all do when everything looks a bit drear and dark and asked his mum, Iolanthe, who we need to remember is also a fairy, for advice. But while Strephon and Iolanthe were talking, little did they know the naughty humans were spying on them. <gasps>
the day and all is dull and grey to chase the bloom away on the accord. What was that? I think I've heard him say that on a rainy day to while the time away on her he'd go. We think we heard him say that on a rainy day to while the time away on her he'd go. thy bark and all is drear and dark if thou shouldst need an ark i'll give thee one who is she i heard the mix remark she'd meet him after dark inside st james's park and give him one we heard the mix remark she meet him after dark inside st james's park and give him one Fix not so bad, my heart so sworn and sad, may the ladies so be glad of some sound. Oh, when the sky is dark, and tempest track my mark, if I should need an ark, she'll give me one. Oh dear. Everyone's a bit confused. Do you think they would, should just talk to each other? Now, what do we think Stratton should do? What do you think, everyone? We'll talk amongst ourselves. Who do you think might be able to help Stratton with his problem? That's right. He calls the Fairy Queen his mighty protectress to send all of her fairies to his aid. We can always solve a problem more quickly as a team, and the fairies come tripping along happily. Fairies to the rescue, everyone. Can I enact to see my fortunes fade? No, no, mighty protectress, hasten to my aid! decides to cast a spell over the whole town to make Srefon the leader, much to the horror of Lord Chancellor and his cronies. There's quite a commotion in Parliament because the humans don't like sharing their home or their resources. And at this very moment, two humans are having a bit of a squabble with the fairies about the size of their brains. Let's go and see. Strafen's a member of Parliament, can his every plea he chooses to his measures all is set, showing the fairies are the uses. Strephon's a member of parliament, running a mock of all abuses, his unqualified assent, somehow nobody now refuses. Wings and toys, dim their glories, giving an ear to all his stories, carrying every little image. Here's a pretty kettle of fish, kettle of fish, kettle of fish, kettle of fish, kettle of fish. Here's a pretty kettle of kettle of fish. Strephon's a member of parliament, carrying every little Oh 
dear, the humans don't seem very happy to have the fairies in their town, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> so Strephon might now be the leader of the town, but without everyone's help, he can't possibly hope to clean the forest. It's not just the fairies whose homes are filled with rubbish. The animals are having to leave the forest too. And after all, the forest is an ecosystem where every plant, animal, fungus and human being must work together so that everyone can live there happily. But the naughty humans don't seem to understand this. Now, two of the fairies do try to talk to them and tell them they should perhaps behave a little bit more responsibly, but the naughty boys don't seem to take any notice. You seem annoyed. Annoyed? I should think so. Why, this ridiculous protégé of yours is playing the deuce with everything. Yes, if you please. That's our fault. The deuce it is. Yes, we influence the members and compel them to vote just as he wishes them to. It's our system. It shortens debates. I don't want to say a word against brains. I've a great respect for brains. I often wish I had some myself. But with a house of peers composed exclusively of people of intellect, what's to become of the House of Commons? I never thought of that. This comes of women interfering in politics. It so happens that if there is an institution in Great Britain that is not susceptible of any improvement at all, it is the House of Peers. Charming persons, are they not? <laughs> Distinctly, the self-contained dignity combined with airy condensation? Give me a British representative peer. And then pray stop this prodigy of yours before it's too late. Think of the mischief you're doing. But we can't stop them now. Aren't they lovely? <laughs> oh, why did you go and defy us, you great geese? Oh dear getting a bit embroiled in love, as well as environmental politics. There we go. So we're all out of ideas. And as a last chance, Aya Lamphy goes to the Lord Chancellor to try and convince him to help clean up the forest. What do you think she says? What would you say? Do you think the Lord Chancellor will finally consent to helping the fairies? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. What do you think, Nina? We'll have I, to see. Yeah, if they were, maybe if they all work together and tell the Lord Chancellor what he's doing wrong, we might have some success. Let's find out. Victory. Success has crowned my efforts. At first, I wouldn't hear of it. It was out of the question. But I took heart. I pointed out to myself that I was no stranger to myself, that, in point of fact, I had been personally acquainted with myself for some years. Eventually, after a severe struggle with myself, I reluctantly, most reluctantly, consented. Hooray! So Victory. the Lord Chancellor has, oh, <laughs> has agreed to help. He's sadly, Ooh. even though the Lord Chancellor decided to help and clean the forest, it wasn't quite enough to manage everything. Because the humans had already done a lot of damage to the forest. Now, I'd like you to imagine that you've gone into the forest and you've cleaned up all of the things you can find. And you've used your imagination and creativity to turn the rubbish into some beautiful objects. Nina, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you managed to make? Yes, this pair of fairy wings I actually made out of two old coat hangers that I found lying around that would have maybe impaled a baby hedgehog. And then I used a feather boa, just that I found in my house, and some string to make my own pair of fairy wings. So our imaginations can really give rubbish and old things that we thought we'd throw away a new life. But sadly, as you can see, there's only one bluebell left in the magical bluebell forest. What? 
even after all our creativity with the rubbish, no. there's only one thing for it. Exactly. And I mentioned earlier that fairies really do love singing, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yes, and they've actually written a magic song to persuade the flowers to grow back again. And maybe, just maybe, if we all sing it together, we can work our own magic. So, you're going to be our newest cast members. And we need to do a quick warm up before we start singing so our voices can soar up into the sky to get the fairies to help us and then soak down into the soil so even the baby bluebells can hear us singing to them. So I'm going to take off my fairy wings, Ta -da! become a human again. So everyone, on your feet for a little warm up. <clears throat> if you have space, you can always just do it sitting in your seat as well. So first of all, can you stretch up to the sky? really tall like a huge big oak tree or a birch tree or your favorite type of tree now can you crouch down to the floor like a tiny mouse like a tiny squeaking mouse and up again like a huge tree a huge beautiful oak a huge weeping willow and now back to the floor like a tiny little wood louse it's very good now can you imagine that your head is a huge pumpkin and stretch your mouth as wide as popcorn. Pumpkin hair. Very good. And now tiny acorn. Tiny acorn. Tiny acorn. Now can you stretch your face really wide again? Pumpkin hair. Tiny acorn. Tiny acorn. Very good. And now can you imagine you've got little ants crawling all over your face? Oh, keep your mouth closed. They don't go in. Over your eyes, over your hair, down your arms, up your arms, down your legs. Little ants everywhere, very good. On your cheekbones, if you can. And now, what's that we can hear? Is that a little bumblebee? He goes <laughs> One goes right on your nose. flies away very good and now there's an owl somewhere far off in the distance we're going twit twoo twit twoo twit twoo and we can hear the rain starting to fall so can you get your fingers go pitter patter pitter patter pitter patter pitter patter pitter patter warming up your face muscles pitter patter for our words pitter patter pitter patter pitter patter pitter patter we can hear the wind in the leaves now going shh. Very good. Oh, but what's that? Now I think the Lord Chancellor, I can see, he's just got on his motorbike and he's going vroom, 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 vroom. Can we all do that? Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> Getting closer. <laughs> Very good. And now finally, the fairies are singing back. Ah! You can do that right high in the top of your voice. Ah! Ah! Very nice. And now we can hear the sound of our own singing. So over to Eleanor to teach you yes. song. Okay, so the first thing to do is to learn the words of the magic song. So some of these words are a bit tricky, so we'll go through them nice and slowly. So repeat after me. Up in the air, sky high, sky high. Can you have a go? Up in the air, sky high, sky high. Free from wars, enchants awry. Free from wars, enchants awry which means big squabbles in the parliament where the Lord Chancellor works. He will be surely happier for. He will be surely happier for. He's such a susceptible Chancellor. He's such a susceptible Chancellor. 
Now, if anyone's a bit stuck, what this means is if the Lord Chancellor and all of us use our imagination to soar into the sky away from squabbles over who gets which bit of land or who owns what, we'll be much happier because at the end of the day, our imaginations are more important and are the ways that we can work together. So hopefully that will make sense. Some of this language is a bit oldie woldy but now we need to learn the music. Now, it's, it's a bit tricky, so we'll do it nice and slowly. And I've got the help of my little keyboard here. So that works, just checking. So the tune goes like this. So I'm gonna sing a bit and then you can sing a bit. La, 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 la. Sing that. La 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 la. And it's the same thing again. La 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 la. La 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 la. Let's put the first two lines to that so it goes up in the air, sky high, sky high. Up in the air, sky high, sky high. Free from wars and chance arise. Free from wolves in Chancery. Next bit, very good, very good. Next bit goes at this. He will be surely happier for. He will be surely happier for. La 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 la. You'll hold that note. Ready? La 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 la. la. I'm sure we can do it. La 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 la. He will be surely happier for. Very good. And the last bit goes la 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 So it's he will be surely happier for. He's such a susceptible chancellor. He will be surely happier for. He's such a susceptible chancellor. So the rhythm is a bit tricky for um, susceptible. So it goes, he's such a susceptible. So can we do that together? He's such a susceptible. Right, very good. I think we should try the whole thing together. What do you think, Nina? Yes. Let's check this on the right note. Ooh. Very good. So up in the air, sky high, sky high. Free from wars and chance arise. He will be surely happier for he's such a susceptible chancellor. Good. Now I think we're ready to hear the fairy sing it. What do you reckon? I think we practice it one more time. One more time. All right. And maybe we can clap along the rhythm as well. So we clap. Crotchets. Da, 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 da. All right. Up in the air, sky high, sky high, free from wars in chance arise. He will be surely happier for he's such a susceptible chancellor. Lovely. One more time? One more time for good luck. This time, and Nina's going to sing. So let's see how it goes. Ready? Three, four. Up in the air, sky high, sky high. Free from wars in chance awry. He will be surely happier for he's such a susceptible chance along. And if you forget the words, you can always hum along. <laughs> or do my favourite, which is do 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 because when the rest of the cast joins us. It might be harder to remember all of the words. So you could do, 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 do along in the choruses. Yeah. This, chorus, this chorus that we've just learned is the end of the big song. So you've got the whole song to listen to the tune because it repeats a few times. And get mm. ready to go. Yeah. You get all the words. And even if you forget the music, you can clap along or sway along to the beat. Just get involved, move your body and use your voice because it's by making music together that hopefully we're going to make all those bluebells grow back. Yes, let's believe. 
believe. Let's see what the fairy queen has to say. You are a fairy from this moment. And you, my lord, what say you? Will you join our ranks? Well, now that the peers are to be recruited entirely from persons of intelligence, I really don't see what use we are down here. Do you, you Talana? None, whatever. <laughs> then away we go to Fairyland. from this moment. So good they wanted to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Neil. Continue with the story. Has the forest grown back, Eleanor? Can you see anything? Um not sure. Have a look. I don't know. What do we think everyone? Did, did you sing loudly enough? Yeah, did you sing loudly enough? Did you believe it enough? Let's see. <gasps> Look at all the blue bells! They've all grown back! Isn't that brilliant? Fantastic! The forest is now clean and the blue bells are back. You used your voices for good and rewrote the story so that the baddies turned good-ish. Fairy Queen is very pleased and thinks it all must be very magical. So at the story's end, what have we learned? We've learned to recycle our rubbish and to make it into something new and creative like these fairy wings. That we need. <laughs> yes, and we've learned that working as a team is so much better than working by yourself. Work with your friends and family to get the job done. Exactly. Now, we've all got very, very powerful imaginations that can change people's minds and save the day. Thank you so much, everyone, for helping us tell this story. And so finally, we want to leave you with three things because we've been told to by Transform Your World, by the big directors. So we've got a vision statement for the world that we want. The world we want is a world in which music and storytelling 
translate environmental facts into feelings and then actions. We've now got a pledge for our audience, and this is something that we'd like you all to do, which is to make something interesting or beautiful out of your rubbish, making sure you clean it first. Then, if you're feeling confident, get some help from a grown-up, send a picture of it to a creative person, or an artist, or a theatre or museum if you like, asking them if they want to try making something too. Now, we have a website, it's called Green Opera. .co.uk and we're always happy to see pictures of things that you've made or hear from you or ask us for help if you're stuck on making something rubbish. We've got lots of wonderful designers and singers and everything who can help you turn your rubbish into something special. So do get in touch with us. Amazing. And finally, we can inspire each other, but we also want to inspire our world leaders. So our call for them, if you're listening, is to suspend your disbelief, to open your eyes and see hope in the powerful stories of artists, musicians and other creatives. Because we stand to lose so much if you can't imagine what we stand to gain. Thank you so much everyone for taking part. We hope you enjoyed it and that you can remember the song. Um, have an absolutely wonderful day and keep creating and keep imagining. Very good. Give yourself a round of applause. And it wouldn't be the end of the performance without a bow. So if you are able to stand up. One, two, three. Very good. Oh, well done, everyone. And I'm not sure we have any questions in the Q&A, but if we do, we will answer those later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think in that case, we can leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs>